my name is Jamie Aaron, and today I'm going to show you a few useful turnarounds you can use in blues progressions. So the turnaround is the little chord progression that usually happens the last two bars of a blues progression, bars 11 and 12 in a 12 bar blues. And this progression's purpose is to bring you back home, to create a bit of tension and to sort of create the locking feeling that's going to take you back to the top of the form or the end of the tune. So we'll go through a few classic blues turnarounds and some variation. So for our first turnaround, we're going to be playing based out of this little chord shape that looks like a triangle or a D7 chord, but moved up a whole step to E7. So to play this chord, take your second finger and put it on the fourth fret of the third string. That's a B, the fifth. Then you're going to take your first finger and put it on the third fret of the second string. D, and then your third finger will go on the fourth fret of the first string. And we're just going to play that in triplets, or one, two, three, and then move it down a half step, or one fret, and then another half step, and then to an E7 chord. You can hammer on with your first finger that open G to a G sharp. So we can also, instead of playing those chord notes together, we can arpeggiate them. We can do it from high to low. Or low to high. So we can also make this a little more interesting by alternating between fretted notes and the open E string, the open first string. just the open E string, not the fretted note, but also play the other two notes. So I'm using second and third finger. But you can also, because we're not using the third finger, you can still use your first and second finger. together, arpeggiating, alternating with the open string, or playing with just the open string on top. So for our next set of turnarounds, let's go to the key of A. So we're going to start with our first finger, second fret of the third string, A, and your pinky will be playing an octave higher on the fifth fret of the first string. And you'll play that together. And I'm using hybrid picking to do that. You could use your fingers, but it's easier if you have not a pick, because with a pick, you'd have to strum and mute that second string. So I'm using pick on the third string, fingers on the first string, but you could also just use your fingers. And I'm playing these two notes together. And then I'm going to keep my pinky 
right there on the fifth fret of the first string, and I'm going to move my third finger to G on the fifth fret of the fourth string. And then from G, I'm going to go to F sharp with my second finger, down a half step. It's the fourth fret of the fourth string. And then F with my first finger on the third fret, and then down to E on the second fret of the fourth string. So we have... So on the top, you're just going to keep that pinky going with every note, but then the melody that you'll have going on the bottom is... So it sounds together like... And then we'll do our five chord, which in this case is E. I'm going to hammer on that G sharp, play my open E and B, and then play the full E7 chord. So we got four. We could also separate those notes. So I start with the A and then the high A. challenging turnaround. This one is inspired by my former teacher Bruce Foreman and it involves contrary motion. So we're going to play an A and then an A two octaves above. So we're going to play the A that's down at the fifth fret of the sixth string and then the A that's on the fifth fret of the first string and then C sharp and G. That's the C sharp at the fourth fret here at the fifth string, and then the G on the third fret of the first string. And then D and F sharp. And then E flat at the sixth fret of the fifth string. And with my pinky, I'm gonna play F, that's on the 6th fret of the 2nd string. And then we end with two E's together. So you have this going on. And... But they're happening together. So you can also pick these together. Or you could alternate it. Here it is again, really slow. A little faster. And for our final turnaround, this is more like something you'd play in a jazz progression. start with an A7, just a three note chord, A, G, and C sharp, then A9, and this A9 shape looks kind of like a C sharp half diminished, it's the same thing, to D7, and then we're going to make an E flat diminished just by moving the second finger to the 6th fret. Keep everything else planted. 6th fret of the 5th string. And then we're going to play A7, but with an E in the bass. So we got E, G, C sharp, and E. And then we're going to go from F9 to E9. So here it is slow.
So I hope this video has been useful, giving you some new ideas of things you can add to your turnarounds in blues playing. Turnarounds happen all the time, every 12 bars in the blues. So it's great to have some different variations you can use for different settings, different situations. So take these, practice them all sorts of different ways, practice them in different keys, try finger picking them, try alternating and arpeggiating, try playing these chords at the same time. You'll get some new ideas and it'll really beef up your blues rhythm playing. And you can also use these in your lead lines as well. So let me know what your favorite blues turnarounds are and drop me a comment below and uh, subscribe for more lessons, more videos, more gear reviews, and more music. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.